right, guys. Welcome back to the One Percenter Podcast. It's Danny Klein. I'm here with Big Rye. What up, what up, what up? Episode, this I think is seven or eight. And we're kicking it off, man. Big I wanted deep. to uh, introduce Big Rye to everybody on the YouTube. And uh, go ahead, man. I want to start off by just kind of asking Ryan kind of a little bit of his background. Like, number one, what did you do before sales? Like, tell us a little bit about your childhood, how you got in the car business, and then how you even, like, even ended up here. You're from, you're from Green Bay. Green Bay, Wisconsin, born and raised. So, so my a Packers my, fan. Oh, huge Packers fan. I mean, massive. So my story is a little bit different. Um, grew up in Wisconsin. You know, big outdoors guy. Loved hunting and fishing. From the moment I was a little kid, all I wanted to do was fish. So my dream was to work at like a Bass Pro Shops or a Cabela's, and I just wanted to sell fishing tackle. I just wanted to sell fishing tackle and fish. So when I was 15 years old, I ended up getting a job at this little tiny bait and tackle shop. It was like my dream. I mean, I was selling night crawlers. And were minnows. you on like the inner city, or were you like outside a little bit, like in the states? No, this was like yeah, this was right in the inner city. You know, I mean, Green Bay. It's a, it's a small town. It's about a hundred thousand people, and you have the you have Lake Michigan and the Fox River. Okay, and, I'm painting uh, the picture. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just a little, you know, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I'm at this bait shop, and uh, I'm selling bait and tackle, minnows, you know, night crawlers, lures, mm -hmm. and I was just living the dream. I did that till I was about 21. And at the age of 21, um, I ended and, and up. How old are you now? Just so I'm that I'm 26. 26. But when years I was your old. age, Danny, I was 11. Oh yeah. I mean, by the way, I'm, guys, I'm 23 years old. Ryan's 26. Yeah. And, and so when you're 21. Yeah. So so when I was 21, I ended up getting my girlfriend at the time pregnant. So that was a big life change because you know at the bait and the, tackle shop, you know I wasn't making a lot of it. money. That's not getting it. That's not getting it. I was making you know I was getting paid night crawlers and just fishing all the time. Yep. So when I was 21, I had to make a decision that like I had to do something to support this little baby coming into the world, right? So in Green Bay, everyone works in a paper mill. And I don't know if you guys know what paper mills are, but they make paper. Yeah, so, it doesn't sound like the most fun. Yeah, it's not so, really like an ideal job, but it's a good, I'm still trying know. to picture it. It's been about two years, and I'm still trying to picture what a paper mill really looks it's, like. It's it's dirty, wet. Um, you know, it was fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of things are dirty hey. and wet. But, you know, but this place was, you know, it was a good, you know, it had benefits. It yep. paid a lot better than, than, than the uh, bait and tackle shop. But it's shop a nasty, did. nasty work environment. Nothing you want to stay at for. Yeah, you know, 12-hour shifts, which aren't bad, How, but it was like swing shift, which means like you work days and nights, and it's just. Getting it's paid not, hourly? Getting paid hourly, which, I mean, How you much know, were you making? I was probably making 70 grand a year, so it wasn't bad, but it was just like I always had this feeling like mm -hmm. I could do more. Like I, and I'd watch YouTube videos and I'd watch podcasts like this, and I'd see these guys talking about like sales and you know leveling up, yep. and I, you know, was the following mindset, everything, yeah, and all that stuff, and I'd really like that. And in the environment at the paper mill, the guys I was surrounded with didn't really think that way. They just thought, hey, work for 50 years put money into a 401k and retire the, at the, 70 the 99 percent you know get a job yeah, go to work exactly. have a good life have a good family yeah and then you die and yeah. that was that's that's like it and i was just like man Stop this, the dream yeah this isn't i just don't see myself doing this i don't want to be that person and i really believe like you can be whoever you want to be like you know whatever you visualize 100 percent. That, that's your reality and i always just seen this this better version so long story short I'm at the paper mill for a couple of years, busting have, have my the, tail. Have the baby. Remy. Yep, have, yep, have the baby, Remy. Love Remy. I mean, you've met Remy. She's a little she's princess. Amazing. She's, 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 she's definitely like she's Ryan, a little closer, but a little girl, little girl version. Yeah, Big yeah. old smile, happy all the time. Yeah, she's always happy. And well, so anyways, I'm at the paper mill. Things are going all right. A buddy of mine. So we're I'm at this bar, you know, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. A guy pulls up that I had known from high school. He pulls up in this black AMG Mercedes, all blacked out. And nobody in Green Bay has that unless you're, like, a Packer player, right? You know? So I'm like, bro, what do you do for a living? He's like, I sell cars. And I'm like, come on. You, you sell cars and you're – I mean, this is, like, a you know, probably $150,000 car easily. Oh, yeah. You know? And, I, and I'm like – he's like, yeah, dude, I sell cars. And I'm like, well, how much did you make last year? He's like – I like 200, 250, something like, I, something like that, right? And I'm like, get the heck See, out of here. See, I didn't here. know the story. This is cool. Yeah, and, then, and I was just like, dude, and this guy was, he's a great guy. I love the guy, but he's like, if he can do it, I can do it. And yep, I was that's like, the same mentality I had. Yeah, I was like, this guy, there's just no way. So that's when I started really, like, and this was probably did like you, six months you, before I got into the car business. So did you go and just, like, put applications in? Like, for the no, guys I, that, like, are thinking the same thing that we were thinking back, like, when we were, like, oh, like I want that car. I want to have that life. I can. There's no like me and you are no different. For the guys that have that mm -hmm. mentality, what would you recommend for them to like go and get a job? Do you just walk in? Are you submitting applications? Did you just have a friend that got you a job, or, or yes. how did it go down for you? So well, that's that. And this is how it all wraps into like the Elliot Group and Andy. This is where I this is where I ran into Andy, and Andy closed me. So I'm on YouTube. The best right? thing that ever happened the to us. Oh yeah, life changing. So Andy's. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm on YouTube and I'm watching all this different YouTube on sales and training because I want to I want to get prepared before I get the job because I, I can't like afford to take a pay cut. There's like, no I, there's like, no hourly. Bills. There's yeah. no hourly. You either close or you don't. Exactly. And I was like, and I knew that, so I'm like, I want to go into this and make sure I can I can crush it out of the gate. So I'm on YouTube. I run into Andy. And this is back before Andy was like really big. How to sell cars. Yeah, it was just how to sell cars. <laughs> and I was scrolling and I'm seeing all this different stuff. This is this is 2020, by the way. Yeah, this is like 20, 20 even late, 20. No, late, this, is, no, this yeah. might be 2019. Oh, yeah. Like like in the like fall. Yep. So well, anyway, so I'm on YouTube. Find Andy. I really resonate with him. And he's got this text me whatever number. We all know the 918. 918-210-0254. Yeah. So so I I call it up. Andy closes me on a seminar. Hey, I'm fly, you're you're gonna fly out to first, Oklahoma. First call. First call. Now that's I, just you wanting it. Like well, and I wasn't even in the car business. I was still at the paper mill at this point. And I'm just like, okay, I hear all these guys talking about personal development and skill acquisition. That's something I've never mm-hmm. done. Maybe I should I should do that. And I had you know a couple of grand in the bank. You know, I wasn't yep. like didn't have a lot of money, but I'm like, you know what? This is one thing I haven't done. Let's try it. So I fly out to Oklahoma, right? I, oh, I, yeah. buy, I got a this, suit. This you know wasn't Oklahoma. Wasn't like you know, it's not like oh Scottsdale, come out here, palm trees. Like yeah, it, it was, was like, like Oklahoma. You, Andy closed you on Oklahoma. I mean, that's that's a close. Yeah. It, well, and I and I was jacked. I was like, you know, I'm getting on a plane. I'm flying out. Yep. This was, it was a, it was kind so, of so exciting. Fa- so fast forward, you fly down. Yeah, fly down. Meet the twins. And yep, meet the whole meet, team. Meet meet the whole team. Go to a master closure seminar, and I'm jacked up. I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm. Yeah, I heard you like, ran that room. You might as well. Bro, train the whole room. I, dude, I was just meeting all these people and shaking hands and networking and hearing all these guys doing really well. And I'm like, man, I really like this environment. I really like being around these people. So I go back. And by the way, it was the very first time I ever went live on Facebook was at the seminar. And it was like during COVID too. So like people were all like, oh, yeah. oh my God, you're in a room full of people. Yep, and you still had to fly with masks. Yeah. You know, everything. And I remember how nerve, because a lot of people ask us now, hey, how do you get over the fear of going live? Like, what if I say something stupid? And I remember just, being in that room and going like, Man, this yep. is this You're is like, scary. Oh. And for everyone out there, that's like the same thing, like trying to go Facebook Live or think, oh, my God, how do I get on a podcast? How yeah. do I do that? Or how do I speak? You just don't care what other people think about you. Yeah, you just do it. Like, and well, so and then so anyways, do that. Fly back to Green Bay. I'm jacked. I'm calling my girlfriend, going, oh, I just this is the best thing <laughs> ever. Uh, I remember my flight actually got delayed because I had to go to work the next day. And actually, I think I just had started at the dealership, like my first like week. Mm-hmm. And that, this was kind of all happening at the dealership. And uh, my flight was delayed. I had to fly into Chicago, which is like four or five hours from Green Bay. I had to have my girlfriend come pick me up at like midnight, drive back so I get to work in the morning at like nine. It's like my first weekend. Oh, yeah, at the you can't, car miss, can't miss the meeting. Yeah, you're, and you're I'm done. like, so it was like crazy, but I'm all fired up. And I go back to the, so now I'm at the dealership. And uh, my first month, I mean, absolutely crush it. You know what I mean? I'm just, I got good attitude. Mm-hmm. I got, you know, my skill wasn't like high, but I and just the, had a good attitude. The cool attitude. thing I like about Ryan is, Ryan wasn't in the car business for five years. No. Wasn't in the car business for, I mean, it was like less than a year. And that's one thing a lot of people like. Andy snagged this guy. Just like he snagged me, I was less than two years in the car business. He snagged him less than one year in the car business. Yep. The, the time and experience it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's skill acquisition. It's how much you want to put in is what you're going to get out. And, and like, so what, nine months in? Like, what did you make? Like, how did that progression? Yeah, so like my first actually was really, it was really cool because the dealership, so my first month you're on like a, uh, new person pay yep. plan, whatever. Yep, green right? pay yeah, plan, new like, guy pay plan. It's pretty, it's pretty crappy, Flats. but the idea of it is you're probably not going to sell a lot, so it's actually a, it's good pay. But it's a safe I, pay it's plan. It's a safe pay plan. But I ended up selling so much that like they felt bad for not paying me like because I had sold like 20 cars or yep. whatever, and they were like, holy shit. You know, so they actually pulled me aside and said, hey, we're going to take you off the new guy pay plan early, put you on the big daddy pay plan. That's great. And I was like, yes, this is this is awesome. You know, and I had my first like big paycheck. I think it was like my first big that's, paycheck. That's nice was, of them. Big. That's nice like, of them. Yeah. They, they didn't have was, to do that. Yeah. Dorsch Ford Kia. You guys are amazing. Shout out Dorsch Ford yeah. Kia. <laughs> um, but they're a they're great dealership and a uh, really great family. But yeah. So then I was just I was fired up. You know, I was just I was in love. And that's that's how it happened. And then so you were killing it. How did how did you work here? That is a question that yeah, I get often. You get often. And and they were like, "Hey, how do you work for Andy? How did you come here? Yeah, like, this, what can I do?" It was like, "What was your experience?" Yeah, this was a this is another crazy story. So I I me and my girlfriend just had moved into a brand new duplex. It was like a thirty two hundred square foot duplex, so it's big and it's out in the country. Started I started like, making the big money. Yeah, I was, and I remember the rent was like sixteen hundred bucks a month, and I was like, "Oh my god, sixteen hundred! <laughs> this is crazy." And, uh, but it was all in the country, had like deer in the backyard, it was a brand Mm -hmm. new construction. It was like, it was beautiful. We were there for one month and I get a call from Ian and Evan Macklin and they're like, bro, we're moving to Scottsdale, Arizona. 
we want you to be on our team. And basically, I was so pumped up. I was like, done. I'm coming literally that night, packed up a Kia Seltos, a little Kia Seltos, drove 30 hours, never looked back, and uh, been here ever since. And the really crazy thing is, about three months before Ian and Evan had called me, yep. my uh, the mother of my child, she's she's moving to Phoenix. Wow. And taking Remy That's with That's crazy. Her. And I'm like, this is a big... You it's know, like it's like how how, how God can has a higher, higher yeah. calling, man. Yeah, and then then I'm like, well, then Ian and Evan, like, hey, we're moving to Scottsdale. I'm like, where's Scottsdale? They're like, oh, it's by Phoenix. And I'm like, done. <laughs> My daughter's down there, gonna be down there. I'm going down there. I want to be around you guys. And I didn't care about money. Didn't care about yep. where I was gonna live. Ian was just like, hey, man, come live with me for 30 days until you figure something out. That's and the, it all worked out. That's the biggest thing about everyone that's that's been hired on is it wasn't hey how much money we're gonna make you know what's the pay plan how do we you know it, there was no discussion of that you know sean paul so twins called you sean pollard called me yep. and i was like dude i'm in and then i was like i was so oblivious to it i'm like what are we gonna be doing like you know i didn't yeah, know I had, that i'd be selling no i didn't idea. know that i'd be coaching i didn't know that i'd be you know flying all over the country like i had no idea what we were gonna be doing I was just all, and that was the day after my, my dad had passed away. So it was yeah, like when all, crazy. one of the worst things like you could have ever happened. I was like, it almost like it was just like God was saying, hey, this is your yeah. calling. And uh, it was weird. I was almost, I almost had a feeling that. I got like goosebumps that was, right now. Yeah, like I know. That, that, that it was going to happen, man. It's just, crazy. yeah. It, it's just about the, the higher purpose and taking action, man. Well, and too, and taking action and making quick decisions. Like a lot of people. Paralyzed. Like, they, yeah, they're paralyzed. They overthink. And that, that in my life held me back a lot is I'd like be overthinking mm -hmm. everything. I didn't make a quick decision. Now in my life, if I'm going to make a bad decision, I'm going to make it quick. If I'm going to make Ooh. a good decision, I'm going to make it quick because time, you got to compress those time frames. And that's so important. And I see a lot of people in life, especially in sales, they mm -hmm. just they just procrastinate that, too that's much. A, and when that's doesn't a huge, recognize that's that. That's a huge bomb. It's like trying to figure out who's the buyer, right? Calling all these leads. Well, it's like, well, there was one guy over here who called 100. He, he made 100 calls, right? He got 10 appointments. And there was another guy who was trying to figure out, oh, what's the perfect lead? I'm going to call the good leads. Well, he he right. only called 10 or 20, and he didn't even get any. It's like the same thing also, like, you know, the guy that's trying to find the perfect girl. He gets yeah. broken up with. He gets his heart broken. He never dates another girl again. And there's another guy who goes and just dates a whole bunch of girls, and then he finds the love of his life sooner than the other guy because exactly of the lack of the lack of action exactly so taking action massive action and just you know just doing it if you think something's good for you i mean do it like don't be you know don't overthink it yep no well, that leads me into i have a few things like that i kind of wanted to cover kind of wanted to throw your guys away throw some value the the biggest thing i think is cool about the elliot group andy's training we all have the same message we have the same belief we have we're on the same mission you know we're all like dude getting in shape, we're eating clean, we're making calls, yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're helping others, putting people first. But how do you work? So a lot of guys are like, hey, you got to work in silence. You have to, you know, put your head down and make the dials. You know, what you do in the dark is, is who you are. So like for you, what's your work style? Because I think style is cool. The number one, the style is closing. Like I said on the last podcast, don't use your style for excuse for, for not going where you want to go and for not closing. And look, I used to be the most anxious person. I'd be sweating. You know, I used to do, I used to do a bunch of drugs. I was a horrible person, man, back in the day. But, like, that's not who I am today. Mm -hmm. So, like, your style, who would you say that kind of you are and, and what's your, you know, I think you have you of, like, a, like, a hammerhead. Like, you're one that's getting it done no matter what it takes. Yeah, I mean, my, it took me a while to kind of find my style, and I think sometimes I'm still dialing it in. I think everyone, there's, you just keep you getting better You continually, and Andy, even Andy's dialing it in. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's killing it. But he's still – it's it's just called growth. Yeah, growth. new levels, new levels. And yep. what I try to do is, you know, I believe, like, mentors and coaches in life are people that have gone where you want to go. So, like, Andy to me is a guy that, you know, I want to go where he, he's, he's going and he's gone. So follow I try him. to follow his style. So, like, Andy's big on social media. I mean, without YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, I mean, the Elliott Group probably wouldn't exist like it does today. Or at no. this level at least. It was built – the Elliott Group, just so everyone knows, it was built on an iPhone – Put on YouTube, and then that's it. And then nine one eight two one zero zero two five four. Hey, text me. Reach out. Yep. We'll help you. You know, and, we'll give you the free training. And, and, the, and that's Andy, how like, it was built. Yeah, I mean, Andy posted video every single day with nobody watching. And I feel like a lot of us, and especially mm -hmm. people that are watching this, you guys post content. You don't get a lot of engagement. And you're thinking, like, man, is this worth? 
is this worth doing it? You know, I see guys getting a million views and I'm getting a thousand. Like no one's seeing this. But that's that's what paralyzes people mm-hmm. from from going to make the content, from going to hit their social media side, from from going to to do the things that they really want to do. It just starts with flipping the camera around, yeah. pressing that little red button, and saying what you have to say. And yeah. if you don't have something to say, you probably don't have enough value or skill sets yet. Yeah, and that's just really a skill. But at the end of the day, it's like if you're just consistent with it. You're going to get better. It's just like, you know, the mm-hmm. Facebook Live thing. When you first do it, you suck at it. It's like but an after, athlete. Yeah, just like an athlete. Everyone more, everyone was on JV, on the practice yeah, squad. Yeah, exactly. You know, didn't know how to dribble the basketball, shoot the three-pointer, until they did. And then, you, and then you do it, and then you start getting better and better and better. And then all of a sudden, it's like, now it becomes addicting because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, this is, this is fun. Now I enjoy it. You know, now I w- like watching my own videos. Yep. And then you just keep doing it. But a lot of people, they start stuff, and they, and they don't follow through, and they quit, and yep. that's – the difference between winning and losing is just, you know, sticking with it. A hundred percent. And up. one thing, too, is, like, I think a lot of people um, don't really understand, like, what growth really looks like. And everyone's definition of, like, growth is different. Well, number one, it's grit, it's grind, it's ugly. You know, winning is, is not, like, sexy. Everyone thinks, like, winning is the glory, the champagne. Winning is the, is the dark. It's the grit. It's the stuff that's ugly, that, that you don't want to do. It's the 4.30, you know, a.m. wake up. It's the you know, the midnight stretch on the last day of the month. It's all of those things. And a lot of guys, they'll go four, five, six months of growth, and then they'll give it all back to, to bad decisions, to bad habits, to drinking, to whatever that may They give it all back. Exactly. What, what do you think is like, why do you think those people are giving it back? Do you think it's a, a self belief thing do you think a self-sabotage i mean i think like, it's just human nature i think humans in general don't stick with things long term i mean you see mm-hmm. a few you know a lack of lack of commitment lack of i mean everyone lacks i mean it's at some level there's a you know a lack of commitment and focus but i just feel like human nature i mean most people are going to fall off at some point but that's where like coaching and mentorship comes into play because a good coach will, will pull you back on when you fall that's the off truth. and i don't think you know, it's, it's a lot of people look at it like negatively, but I think it's just going to happen throughout your life and it might happen on different levels or in different mm-hmm. ways. But in, at some point in life, things are going to happen and the, your response to it and how you overcome it or come back or react are very important. And That's, some people, it's everything. Yeah. Some people Everyone's, just take a nosedive. Some everyone people, that, you know, that nosedive. like you look at these guys, these giants, like, you know, Steve Jobs, like Donald Trump. And look, it's not political, but what I'm saying is like the things that they've done, dude, they got their ass kicked. They failed more than they've won. I'll say they failed more than they won. Most people, you guys just, you don't want to fail enough. Like, just fail faster. The faster you fail, that's the right. more you'll learn, the more you can correct to actually do it the right way. And, and Well, and that's the thing, too. You know, a lot of people, you know, you get on a phone, if you, if you guys are doing phone sales, and a customer hangs yeah. up on you or tells you no, your state gets lowered, and you're like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. This is stupid. Yeah. And, you know, but – the winner will just make another call with the same energy, and eventually, if you keep doing that, you're gonna succeed. You're gonna win. That but it's just leads. like, where's your See, willpower? I think one thing. So, like, your style is you're you're adapting from Andy. I'm adapting from. I'm stealing everything from this guy. I'm stealing everything, and I'm I'm almost trying to to make it better. I'm like, hey, how can I beat Andy? How can I take this guy? Shit, I want to run. I want to help him run the company. You know what I'm saying? I'm here. I'll, save me a plot, a, a plot, a gravestone, headstone. Yeah. Right next to the dude. But the deal is, is I'm trying to grow and I'm trying to beat this guy. But it's like, how are you, how are you training? Are you growing daily? What are, you are, you, what are your habits? Are you recreating? Speaking of headstones. It's, it's, the, biggest, it's the biggest skill is total recreation. If you don't know how to right. recreate yourself. I wonder if, if uh, the editor can drop a picture of like me and Danny like two years <laughs> ago to, to yeah. show recreation. And like, because you're talking about headstones, like yeah. the old Danny's dead. The old, the old Rai is dead. We're both dead. dead. We don't look the same. We don't talk the same. We don't act the same. And uh, that's a really important mm-hmm. thing when you can see physical change. And, like, Andy, if you look back at his old videos, I mean, the dude doesn't even look like the same guy. He looked like – like, he literally someone, like – He looks like, way different. It's weird. And I, if you guys watch the YouTube, you guys know what I'm talking about. But the physical change is, like, one of the number one ways to know you're really leveling up because, I mean, you can see it. You mm-hmm. can't see skill. You can't really see personal development. Mm-hmm. But if you're physically changing, that's a good sign. And uh, I just think that's really cool. We see a lot of people that you know train with us in our on our platform. You see a lot of that physical 100%. change, and I think physical like health is really important if you're in sales. I mean, Danny, it's you everything. work out like crazy. You're jacked. It's everything. You know? And look, it's this everything. isn't like you know. There's no like fitness routine. Like we're not fitness coaches. No, but, not at all. But the the fitness working out, whether like whether you're lean down or whatever it is, just hitting the gym and eating clean. It's important. Like you want to be around for a long time. The reason my father's not with us is he didn't take care of himself. 
you know, and look, I, like, I love the guy, and, you know, I, he's taught me so many things, but you have to learn to take care of yourself. It's the most important thing is to be around well, for your family, if, like, going forward. If you're in business or just in, in life, you want to look you want to look and feel good. I remember mm -hmm. uh, last week, me, Andy, and Jacob Hagerman, we went into a dealership. We were going into dealerships and, you know, talking to GMs and stuff. Yep. And uh, they thought we were selling personal training. Because they're like, you guys look like personal trainers. Like, no, we're sales yep, trainers. Yeah, they're looking down at Andy's bicep, yeah, we man. Got, you got all these, it's you know, popping. veins and stuff. They're like, wow, you guys are just jacked. And it's like, 100%. but that's that's like one of those things like where everyone, I don't care who you are, you, you feel better when you're in better shape. And that's why it's really important like to be in great shape. There was a point I was trying to, to kind of hit on before we moved to like the next couple topics was, you know, maintaining your state. One thing that you're yeah. taught is Ryan knows who he is. He's concrete. He's always in a good state. And he follows it up with with good discipline and work ethic. And that's how you that's how you recreate. That's how you go to the next level is by having the work ethic, having the routine. And everyone's like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm off today. Well, did you do the same things you did yesterday? Are you growing? Are you consistently training? Are you working out? Are you making mm -hmm. the same amount of dials, the same amount of effort? Because if you did, and if you did it on the day that you didn't want to do it, that's what creates a positive state because you wake up feeling like a winner. You go to bed feeling like a winner. Yeah, and that's important, like, wait, like you know, waking up early, having a couple of wins in your life that aren't Small necessarily, wins. like, financial or, like, money, but, like, waking up early, going to the gym, eating healthy, doing some gratitude, writing yep. down some things, getting your day planned. You know what I'm saying? Sending, you know, I, Brad Lee, I learned this from Brad Lee once. He says, hey, million I wake up and I text The Million Dollar people. Morning. Yeah, The Million Dollar million Morning. Dollar I text morning. If you guys haven't seen The, the Million Dollar positive. Morning from Brad Lee, it's amazing. It's powerful, super yep. powerful. And Cute. it's just like that gets your day going on the, right, on the right track. So now you're in a good state. You have a good attitude. Well, if you get on the phone with someone or you're face-to-face -face with a customer. You're not in a good you, attitude. You're, you're not, not getting gonna, yeah, the yeah. feel. <laughs> and, and a good attitude, it costs nothing to have a good attitude. It doesn't, doesn't cost you anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't cost anything. You just have a good attitude. It's that simple. And 100%. a lot of people miss that. Like, just smile. I love to smile. That's it. That's what Ryan's like, known for is his, his unbelievable attitude. No matter what, you see this guy coming in at 4 in the morning or he's going to bed at midnight. He's leaving with a smile. He's coming in with a smile. And he's talking to every single person he talks to with a smile no matter what's going on in his life. And, and believe it or not, and I, and I tell a lot of guys I train, I tell myself this and – like, if you're on a call and you're not smiling, like, people can tell that. Like, you sound You almost just put crazy. a mirror in front of yourself. Everybody, everybody or, should. Or record yourself every single call and just see what you look like. What do you sound like? Would you buy from you? I mean, like, do you look like you're having a good day? Do you sound like you're having yeah. a good day? Because if you don't, look, you think the person you're trying to sell is on fire? Do you think the person, like, do you think that they're going to be inspired by your phone call? You want to talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes, interrupt their day? Well, you better have something good to say. Yeah, and that's like, you know, we had this big event um, last Monday called the Boiler Room, and, like, we had, like, 100 salespeople making Abs calls all day. It was crazy. Insane. Set, I mean, 1, 000, or 1,500 appointments in, like, five hours. But you could tell the guys that were doing really well, they were moving around, they were smiling. Mm -hmm. The guys that weren't doing that well, they were hunched over, they were talking, like, slow, they didn't have a smile on their face. It was, like, so apparent. Like, it wasn't skill, or, like, they all had, this, they all had the same energy. script. It was it's all energy. energy. And having a good attitude, and that's so, like, crazy, but, like, it's it's real. And it's I've, everything. I've seen it in my life, I mean, every single day. So. It's everything. Well, that kind of leads me into the, the next thing is, you know, we talked about style. You said, you know, hey, I'm big on social media. I'm huge on it. Like, I think that, uh, you know, money does follow attention, but you can't, be, you can't be a fraud. It's not about fake followers. It's not about, oh, I'm someone on social media, but then you're not really doing the work in person. That's not it at all. But what's your take on social media? The, the the fakes versus the fraud or the, the the fakes versus the real guys that are really doing it yeah and then like what are you doing on social media because at the end of the day if you don't have any attention if people don't know who you are where you're at what you do yeah, they can't buy from they, you they can't if, they, if they don't know you they can't buy from you but like social media give well number one it gives you a chance to, to show who you are it's your digital handshake because a lot of That's these it. people like you know we do a lot of over the phone sales people don't really necessarily get to meet us until they come to like an event so when I, you know, send someone my Instagram or my Facebook, like they mm -hmm. need to like see who I am. So I'm constantly posting yep. and then adding value. You know, I'm not just saying, hey, buy this adding product value or buy huge. this. Or, you know, if you're a car salesperson, hey, look at the lot. I'm like, I'm, yep. I'm doing stuff like, hey, here's an objection for the day. Here's a word track to memorize. Mm -hmm. You know, here's a, here's a free PDF you can download. Giving value to really for, help people. And that's how you're going to get a return. It's, it's, that's, a, that's the one thing that we learned from Andy. I mean, Andy did it for... I mean, shit, straight. for, for a, straight. even longer than that, yeah. you know, I think that even longer than he even gives himself credit for because yeah, really he, was, five or six he was training and he had put out a video here and there. He didn't really know where he, he wanted to go until, you know, 2018, 2019 to when yeah. he really started going crazy. But it's just about value, giving back to the people. Everyone's trying to figure out, oh, I got to get, you know, the picture with the Lambo or they got to do this. Well, why don't you just like contribute some value to somebody, like help somebody That's go further. 
and, and make your free content better than other yeah, better than paid, the paid content. content. Because when you do that, well, then when they reach out to you, they feel like they already owe you something. And I see 100%. that like with Andy's content. Like people like I watched Andy for I mean a month or two and just was like, man, I mm-hmm. feel like I owe this guy a couple that's, thousand. That's bucks the coolest thing. Him, I'll t- I'll tell people all the time, man. This is this is how I felt when Andy called me, and I was like, you know, if you had to write out a check for how much YouTube content has made you, like how much it's that. helped you, how many more extra deals have you gotten? Would it be at least the amount that we're talking about yep. doing right here on the phone? And if yeah. the answer is yes, what are we talking about? Yeah. You know, so that, that's what it is, man. That's powerful. So everyone that sells something, give value to your people. Have a good digital mm-hmm. handshake. Right now, everybody literally is on social media. And, I, and to this day, I talk to salespeople that don't have social media. And it's like, doesn't make you're any not sense. making the money you want to make, but you don't have like the number one lead generation source like ever. Yeah, like, Facebook. Facebook is a CRM. I mean, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. If you never, if you don't LinkedIn. start building your brand, if you don't start building who you are, who you want to become, well, you'll never like have the freedom that you're trying to chase. You'll be stuck to the phones. You'll be stuck to everything. And look, I'm stuck to the phone every single every single minute of the day, and I I will be till the day I die. But the deal is, is if you want to go further, you want to elevate your value, well, you have to generate more attention. You have to push your message. You have to show the world, hey, look at these thousands of customers that I've done business with Mm -hmm. and let the people sell you. Exactly. Let the people sell you. Mm -hmm. And then, too, it's just good training. Like when you're doing a video, like you're practicing your speech. 100%. You're practicing your quickness. You know, when you're doing videos, we're you got to look good, so you're always dressed nice. Yep. You're looking good. If you're, you're in always sales, looking at yourself. Like you're, it's, it's a good, like, training tool, too. If you're in sales, you're a public speaker. I think a lot of people confuse. They're like, oh, how, Ryan, how do you get up and speak on stage? How do you go and speak in front of dealerships? You know, Andy, how do you do that? Well, you're, everyone's a public speaker. Yep, you're everybody. a public speaker. Like, it's just your perception of what you think about it. When you're in, when we're in front of this room right here, we're in our conference room out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have our master closer seminars every single month. We kill it. Andy trains hard. Our whole team cu- like crushes it and kills it. But, like, y- you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, and we even see guys, like, this, this past weekend at the – we had an ultimate closer summit with Brad, mm-hmm. and uh, we brought some uh, owners, some GMs, some owners on stage. These guys own big dealerships. And they were, like, shaking to be in front of people. Like, that just goes to show you, like, everyone mm-hmm. at some level is, like, scared or they're uncomfortable. It's a situation it, they haven't been in, and you got to put yourself in pressure the better, situations. The, the, more skill, the more skilled you are, the better you'll be at, at speaking on a subject or talking about a subject. And the more passionate you can be because the more you believe in really what you're saying. And, you know, I'm going to end off and tie off this podcast here with a couple of social media tips. It's the three C's. For anyone that's like, you know, trains on Andy's content, trains on the podcast, number one, it's consistency. Number two, it's clarity. And number three is community. If you don't have those three things on your social mm, media, boom. people aren't going to know what you're doing. They're not going to know who you really are. And you're not building anything bigger than yourself. So the, the community is generating something bigger than yourself. The clarity is who you are, really what you're doing, what you stand for, yep. your core values, and the consistency is consistently engaging, consistently posting, consistently responding to your people in every single area, man. Yep, that's the key. That's all you guys need to do. Damn, Danny. Follow follow the three C's, man. Hey, appreciate you guys for tuning in for the One Percenter Podcast. I'm Danny Klein. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram here at Danny underscore underscore Klein. You can go ahead, Ryan, drop Come your follow tag. Big Ryan at Ryan J. Rasmussen. Ryan J. Rasmussen. Come follow me, baby. Woo. Let's go, baby. Appreciate, yep. guys, appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you.